Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Smallpox, the bubonic plague, the Spanish flu. Those are some of the many diseases that have changed the course of history over the last few thousand years. Here's a new one bound for the DSM, Trump derangement syndrome. It's a particularly insidious illness because it doesn't merely affect individuals, but entire political parties, rendering them unrecognizable. Until about 20 minutes ago, for example, the Democrats saw themselves as the party of reason resistant to superstition and mass hysteria. They were, as they often told you, the party that fought McCarthyism. Now it's the party that engages in McCarthyism enthusiastically. Watch. This is nothing short of treasonous because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. I think Donald Trump is a fascist. I think everything he stands for is disgusting. That is pure racism. And the president is cynically using that racism to appeal to his base. That is not what you see in a democracy. That is exactly what you see in authoritarian regimes. They dare me to say impeach him. Today I say impeach 45. Speaking of hysteria, Maxine Waters, of course, did not stop there. She urged her followers to hunt down and harass anybody tied to the Trump administration. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Oh, and they obeyed. And as a result, this happened. This is all rage by proxy, of course. They'd like to hurt Trump himself, but he's not around, so they attack his employees and supporters. And in the absence of any of those, a star on the sidewalk with his name on it. Watch this. That's how it started, but smashing the star did not cool the emotions of the star smashers. Now the star is a venue for street fights. I don't give a f what, f what you gonna do? Get out of my face. We're deep in here. We're deep right here. Get out of my face. We're deep right here. Get out of my face. We're deep right here. Get out of my face. 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 Hear that? What you haven't heard are Democratic leaders appealing for calm. The Democratic Party at this point has become totally unmoored from whatever principles once defined it. Under Franklin Roosevelt, Democrats championed working Americans and organized labor. They couldn't do that today. Too many union members are middle-aged white guys. Instead, their only remaining principle is hatred of the president. If Trump supports something, they're against it. If he's against it, they're huge fans, no matter what it is. Consider the events of the past few months. MS-13, for example, a deadly street gang that engages in sex trafficking, rape, drug smuggling, torture, murder with knives. MS-13 preys on poor people, mostly immigrants. The president called them animals because they are. Within hours, the left produced a wave of speeches and op-eds extolling the basic human dignity of gang members with face tattoos whose model is kill, rape, control. Once they embraced MS-13, the left decided that the law enforcement agency charged with arresting MS-13 must be bad, hence the now common demand that ICE be abolished so that immigration laws can never again be enforced. And then there's Stormy Daniels. Even on the far left, hardcore pornography was not considered an ideal career for your daughter. And then Daniels and her creepy cable-friendly lawyer emerged, and now Daniels is touted on the left as some sort of civil rights hero. When Rudy Giuliani doubted her credibility, he was blasted for impugning the respectability of women who have sex with strangers on camera for pay. Well, for years, the left was even more adamant than the right in demanding free speech for Americans and good for them. And then came Trump. Free speech allowed Donald Trump and his supporters to be heard, so now the left is against free speech. They're begging Facebook and Twitter to suppress the opinions they dislike and censor news outlets that don't toe the new Democratic Party line the line that has existed for about 15 minutes. The left also used to worry about the unchecked power of the most powerful sectors of our government, the CIA and the FBI and the whole constellation of alphabet agencies. They worried that those bureaucrats might violate civil liberties at will. They might spy on Americans. They might hide all of that beneath the black cloak of the word classified. 
Now those agencies have used their power to spy on Trump's associates and leak damaging information about the administration to the press. Suddenly, the left considers them, these unaccountable members of the deep state, heroes. How about this one? For decades, the left accused the rich of not paying their fair share of taxes. Okay. Last year's tax reform bill rolled back the amount of state and local taxes rich people can deduct. Now that the wealthy, though, form the core of the Democratic Party's constituency, liberals are outraged by this. New York and New Jersey are suing the Trump administration to get the rich their tax deductions back. We could go on and on and on. George W. Bush embroiled America in a ruinous Middle Eastern war. The left hated him for that. Now he gave a speech criticizing Trump last year, so he's fully rehabilitated. The left used to fear corporate control of major news outlets, and they should. But after President Trump attacked The Washington Post as a mouthpiece for Amazon mogul Jeff Bezos, a USA Today columnist said those critiques were, quote, attacks on the First Amendment, as if they defend the First Amendment. They don't. President Trump tweeted threats at Kim Jong-un, so his sister was praised at the Winter Olympics for stealing the spotlight from Vice President Pence. She must be great. The president hates her brother. President Trump wants better relations with Russia and peace in Syria. So naturally, all the geniuses in Washington tell us we have to prepare for war against both countries. To anyone who remembers the Democrats of the 1960s, the 90s, or even three years ago, it's all very confusing. That party is dead. It's been replaced by a new one whose entire platform could be say no to Trump. This isn't politics anymore. It's the world's dumbest religion.